Since we've been born, we've been living with gravity and inertia, and we've become masters of predicting how these forces affect our body, and so we can jump, skip, and run with incredible accuracy. But these forces are not important in the governing of water and solute in the body. We need to become familiar and understand new forces that are important in the movement of fluids in our body. These forces are diffusion and osmosis. Let's talk about osmosis first. We're going to do a simple beaker experiment. Here are the players. We have a semi-permeable membrane dividing the beaker into two. Inside the beaker, there is solute on both sides of these membranes, and that solute cannot cross these membranes. It's impermeable to that solute. Of course, there's also water in the beaker, and that can freely cross the membrane. If we add solute to one side of this beaker, that's going to increase the osmolality on that side of the beaker, and that solute will act like a magnet drawing water across the semi-permeable membrane such that there's increased water on the side of that membrane. This is, increases the volume of this side of the membrane, and it will continue to increase until the osmolality is equal on both sides of the membrane, returning you to equilibrium except for you have increased volume on one side compared to the other. This can be seen in the body when the plasma becomes hypotonic and the red cells become relatively hypertonic. Water rushes into the cells, causing them to swell, and if it's severe enough, the cells can rupture, causing hemolysis. This is a result of osmosis, drawing water from a low concentration to a high concentration. The other process is diffusion. We'll do a similar beaker experiment, but the primary difference here is the membrane separating the two compartments. It is now permeable to the solute. Solute can cross the membrane without any difficulty. So now, when you add solute to one side of the membrane, rather than the solute drawing water across, the solute diffuses across the membrane. In the end, you have a new equilibrium with solute equal on both sides of the membrane but this time there's no net movement of water, just solute. So you have diffusion and osmosis. In diffusion, you have movement of solute from high concentration to low concentration. In osmosis, you have movement of water from low solute concentration to high solute concentration. In diffusion, the membranes must be permeable to the solute, while in osmosis, the membranes must be impermeable to the solute. The body is divided into two large compartments, an intracellular compartment and an extracellular compartment. The division between those two compartments is the cell membrane. The cell membrane is impermeable to charged particles like potassium and sodium, though they can pass through a specific sodium-potassium ATPase molecule that's found on all cells. Small, nonpolar molecules like urea and CO2 can easily cross the cell membrane, as can water. The extracellular compartment is divided into interstitial and plasma spaces. The membrane between those two is the capillary wall, and it is highly permeable. Potassium, sodium, nonpolar molecules, and water all cross with very little restriction while proteins like albumin cannot cross this membrane, and cellular components like red cells, white cells, and platelets are equally restricted from crossing. These two membranes, the cell membrane and the capillary walls, are permeable to water. Water crosses across all three compartments with no restriction. This has tremendous implications to the body. That means the CSF has the same osmolality as plasma. If it didn't, if the CSF had a higher concentration than plasma, water would rush from the plasma into the CSF, neutralizing that concentration gradient. Same thing with vomit. Vomit has the same osmolality as plasma, as does gallbladder fluid, as the osmolality in the foot is the same as the osmolality in the brain. The only exception, semen is slightly hypertonic, but the primary exception 
is the kidney and GU tract. From the tip of the loop of Henle to the toilet bowl, the GU epithelial is impermeable to water unless it's unlocked by ADH. This means that the GU tract is able to build up concentration gradients, is able to excrete fluid that is either more dilute than plasma or more concentrated as plasma, and that allows it to regulate the osmolality of the body. There are two implications of the entire body being divided by water permeable membranes. One, the osmolality of the body is the same throughout the body. And two, the size of the various compartments is determined by the number of osmoles in that compartment.